Welcome to People in Profit. I'm Kate Moody. This week, a special show about the future of food. Coming up, a shopping shift. Mega retailers in France say their customer base is drifting away from the one-stop shop model. Where does your food come from? We talk to a farmer's union about the challenges of producing and selling and keeping up with the times. And cutting down on plastic. Our reporter checks out the growing trend of zero-waste food stores in Paris. Here in France, leading supermarkets are losing ground in the retail race. Some top players, including Carrefour and Auchan, have announced job cuts. Consumers are increasingly looking for more organic produce, less hassle, and greater variety in their groceries. E-commerce is also reshaping the shopping landscape, forcing traditional powerhouses to seek innovative ways to keep up. Claire Rush and Nicholas Rushworth explain. In France, the weekly shopping run could soon become a thing of the past. The French are making fewer trips to their local supermarket. Carrefour, Auchan, Leclerc, and other hypermarket chains had 2.5% fewer customers last year. There are too many people. It's not nice shopping with all that noise. You waste time. The parking lot is so big. You have to find a parking space. And then you waste an hour in the shop, which is also big and not people-friendly. And size matters, with smaller organic produce shops springing up, as with this store in Antibes in the south of France. When I shop here, I know what I'm getting, and that's important. It's more expensive, but it's better quality. E-commerce is eating into the superstore business as well. In France, online shopping is growing at a rate of 15 percent per year. The Internet offers more choice and lower prices. The idea that hypermarkets can regain that clientele doesn't seem possible. That said, the idea superstores are dead is also false. They just won't increase their business. Another factor whittling away at French supermarkets is a food law that came into force earlier this year, preventing the big stores from selling brand products at a loss. That led to a 4.2 percent spike in prices in hypermarkets over the space of two weeks at the end of January and in early February. The big stores are responding to the challenging climate by beefing up delivery services. Items ordered online go to a drop-off point near the customer. Other efforts include improving the fresh food offer with dishes to go. Despite setbacks, the superstore model is still making money, with the big chains accounting for more than 50 percent of French retail. Well, the agriculture industry is a major driver of daily life, but also of economic growth. In 2017, the output of the EU agriculture industry was worth 247 billion euros, half from crop production, about 40 percent from animals and animal products. That accounts for about 7 percent of EU exports and 11 percent of trade within the bloc. The subsidies that are linked to the EU's common agriculture policy, meanwhile, represent 38 percent of the EU budget. That's the biggest share of spending. Some 9.7 million Europeans work in the farming industry. But many farmers are worried about their place in the increasingly global supply chain as they try to adapt to changing demands, growing populations, and climate change. Well, for more, we can cross to London and speak to Guy Smith, Deputy President of the National Farmers Union of England and Wales. Thanks for being with us. Your organization, of course, represents farmers in the UK, but many of the same struggles are being repeated around the world. What are the biggest challenges facing the industry? Uh, I think farmers are at the centre of the great challenge that faces humanity, uh, and that is how do we feed an exponentially globally increasing population uh, while not adding to the carbon load on the planet, which, as we know, uh, is causing, carbon, causing issues with our climate, which in turn uh, causes issues with food supply. Uh, and I think farmers are bang smack in the middle of that issue. Who really needs to step up to the plate here? Is it consumers, the government or farmers? Uh, I, I think it's, it's all three, uh, and, and this is very challenging. Uh, farmers cannot address this on their own. Uh, they need governments and they need the rest of the food chain and, and consumers to be involved in this challenge uh, as well. Uh, we think there are ways through technology we can become more productive on smaller spaces that will allow natural areas of the globe uh, to be left alone. Uh, we also think that the more productive farmers are, the lower their carbon footprint is. We think land management can help capture carbon uh, through 
trees or better management of grass or better management of soils uh, and farmers will be involved in producing renewable energy which is another part of how we need to drive towards zero carbon. On one hand, consumers increasingly want transparency and sustainable food sources. On the other, they're still looking for lower prices. Where does that leave producers? Uh, in a tricky place, um, and you're right, uh, I think consumers are more demanding uh, of farmers, and I think farmers are up for that challenge. Uh, I think we are confident in our story, uh, I think we are confident in our produce, uh, and we want consumers to recognise more the value of food, but we also recognise that we are in a market uh, and people will uh, go to the places where they can find the cheapest goods. Uh, but we want consumers to recognise that cheap doesn't always rec um, mean good value. Uh, and consumers need to be aware of the consequences of the where they choose their food from. What about the demand for organic produce? Is that a sustainable trend? If consumers want organic produce, then it's the responsibility of farmers to produce that. And I think if the market signals are right, then farmers will do that. Uh, but we need to remember that organic produce is less than 5% uh, of the market. Uh, it's a bit niche. Uh, and if every farmer piled into organic production, then that would erode the premium it uh, attracts. And then that would be self-defeating because it costs more to produce organic food. Guy Smith, thanks for joining us on People in Profit. Next, what does the future of food packaging look like? With nearly all of the planet's natural spaces touched by plastic pollution, an increasing number of consumers hope the answer to that question is nothing at all. Here in Paris, businesses from supermarkets to delivery startups are responding, taking part in what's become known as the zero waste movement. France 24's Brian Quinn filed this report. 3,000 tons every day. That's how much household trash the city of Paris collects. Only 20% of it goes to recycling. As the scale of global plastic pollution becomes impossible to ignore, many Parisians are looking to take action. Here in the city's 18th arrondissement, the Zero Waste House is a nonprofit dedicated to helping consumers change their habits and drastically reduce their environmental footprint. In the front, a package-free boutique stocked with reusable containers, toiletries, and composting supplies. In the back, a workshop space where volunteers teach everything from making your own detergent to how to travel sustainably. Today, it's square one. La première anticipation, c'est de préparer un planning de repas. Today we're doing a workshop on how to get started shopping in zero waste mode. It's geared towards an audience at the start of their zero waste journey, so how to do their shopping in bulk without plastic bags or packaging. We're going to teach them the basics so they can get started. Over its first two years, the boutique sales have nearly tripled, and it's far from alone in the trend. A Nielsen study released in April 2019 shows more than a third of French shoppers are buying unpackaged goods beyond the produce aisle. To meet the growing demand, a new class of stores has sprung up nationwide. Day by Day was launched in 2013 to offer bulk groceries to the average consumer. It's now a chain with eight locations in the greater Paris area and 48 elsewhere across the country. Revenues went from 300,000 euros in 2014 to over 30 million forecast for 2019, with 20 more locations slated to open this year. We decided that we needed to create a special ecosystem, and we've seen the market multiply by 10 since 2013. Why? Because we created an economic model that proved it was possible to do it well, to do it for nearly all shopping needs, possible to create something profitable and thus sustainable. Big supermarkets and big tech are getting in on the action as well. French grocery giant Carrefour is partnering with American recycling startup TerraCycle to launch Loop, a web-based delivery service for groceries and household goods that consigns packaging to the consumer for retrieval and reuse when empty. Our goal is to deliver the food transition for all, and one key part of the food transition is packaging. 
Brands like Tropicana, Coca-Cola, and Evian are taking part in the trial service launched in Paris and select cities around the world in May. We realize that there's really a demand from consumers and citizens looking for practical solutions to reduce their environmental impact. We're a business that's been operating in the recycling of products that are difficult to recycle. We quickly realized that we needed to be looking harder at reusable models. As the world's oceans fill with plastic to the tune of 13 million tons per year, environmental organizations are calling for policy solutions that hold companies accountable for the packaging they sell. In the meantime, however, it's clear that a growing number of consumers here in France are eager to be part of the solution. Well, that's all for now, but you can find the best of our coverage on our Facebook page, France 24 Business, or you can tweet me with your questions at Kate A. Moody. Until next time, thanks for watching. With all the main European news, debates between representatives of the best and worst performing EU member states, and exclusive interviews with major personalities. Talking Europe, presented by Catherine Nicholson on France24 and France24.com.